Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Julie Watts and I'm the Social Work Coordinator here at Langs. And I'm excited during this Mental Health Week to be able to begin to introduce you to the science of happiness. Recently, I read a quote that said, the cure to unhappiness is happiness. And that might sound oversimplifying it, but as you go through this series of 13 workshops, 13 modules, you'll see that in fact, the science does demonstrate that if we improve our happiness and increase our happiness, we actually are less likely to be depressed and are more likely to be resilient to a variety of different challenging circumstances in our life. So my hope for today is to provide you an introduction to positive psychology and the science of happiness and to help you gain some understanding into what makes a person happy and why would we want to be happy. And then I'm going to introduce you to the 12 modules or happiness increasing activities that can increase your happiness and well-being. So what is positive psychology? So in the field of psychology, Psychologists have traditionally focused on what's wrong with people and established diagnoses and assessment tools to kind of understand what is it that's not working right. The intentionality around what's not working right is to come up with approaches and strategies to help improve well-being. And the field of psychology is definitely an important field for us to understand some of the challenges that people face in their life in terms of their mental health. However, in around the 1970s, 1980s, Dr. Martin Seligman began to ask the question, well, what about people who are doing well? What are they doing that enables them to live quality lives and happy lives? And Dr. Seligman introduced the concept of positive psychology. And again, he didn't minimize the fact that there was a need for psychology that understood pathology, but he felt that it was only part of the picture. You'll find below this video, there is a link that gives you a little bit more history around the work that Martin Seligman did in terms of the history of positive psychology. So Martin Seligman, Dr. Seligman defined positive psychology, defined positive psychology as the scientific study of optimal human functioning. It aims to discover and promote the factors that allow individuals and communities to thrive. So what do most people say when you ask them, what do they want from their life? Most people will say they want to be happy. So we're going to pause now and I'm going to ask you to complete a subjective happiness scale. And I'm going to ask you to scale them each on a scale of one to seven. Each question has a different scoring, so listen carefully. So the first question is, on a scale of one to seven, with one being not a very happy person and seven being a very happy person, in general, I consider myself. So the next question, again on that scale of one to seven, is, one being less happy and seven being more happy. Compared with most of my peers, I consider myself. And the third question, one is not at all and seven is a great deal. Some people are generally very happy. They enjoy life regardless of what's going on and getting the most out of it. To what extent does this characterization describe you? And again, one being not at all and seven being a great deal. And the final question is one being a great deal and seven being not at all. Some people are generally not very happy Although they're not depressed, they never seem as happy as they could be. To what extent does this characterization describe you? And again, one is a great deal and seven not at all. Now to calculate your score, just add the four numbers together and divide them by four. And you'll end up with a figure somewhere between one and seven. And again, this is a subjective happiness scale, 
much of the scoring and happiness is subjective. And one of the things I'll encourage you to do is as you participate over the 12 happiness increasing activities modules, I'll ask you to come back to this subjective happiness scale and perhaps retest yourself and see, has my happiness improved? And if you practice, and you'll learn as we go through this module, what you practice grows stronger. If you practice, you will indeed see your happiness level improve. So what do people on average score? On average, the score ranges between 4.5 and 5.5. University students tend to score a little bit lower than 5, and older retired adults tend to score about 5.6. It is important to note that a score of less than four might indicate depression. And if you do feel that you, when you answer these questions, that you need some extra support, please look to the Langs website at www.langs.org for a variety of resources that you can access. Regardless, whatever your score is, you can be happier. So happiness is a continuum, similar to our height or our IQ. Happiness refers to the experience of joy, contentment, or positive well-being, combined with a feeling that one's life is worthwhile. Academic researchers view happiness as subjective well-being. Generally speaking, we self-report our happiness. It's inherently subjective and it's defined by our perspective. And that's why sometimes we can look at two people who objectively look like they're experiencing something very similar and yet their experience or their reporting of their own happiness can vary. So this is where we get into the fun stuff. So what contributes to our happiness? Why is it that we think some people are just happier than other people and that we're sometimes destined to just have a life of unhappiness or have a life of happiness while others around us aren't. So what the science has found, and this research is based on the work of Sonia Limbarowski and her book, The How of Happiness and the Myths of Happiness, as well as the research coming out of the University of Berkeley. There is a plethora of research out there around the science of happiness. This particular uh, series of workshops grounds itself primarily in those two resources, but you'll see from some of the attachments below, some of the links below, that there are many people, many researchers around the world who are trying to understand what is it that makes people happy. And to date, these 12 happiness increasing activities have been scientifically pro proven to increase happiness. So again, back to what determines happiness. What the research tells us is that about 50% of our happiness is genetic. And that means similar to our height or our IQ or our eye color, they are things that we likely cannot change. And I say likely cannot change. Today's research tells us that we can't change our genetics, but there certainly is ongoing research to assess if that is always the case. So next is our life circumstances. And about 10% of our happiness is based on our life circumstances. And absolutely for some people that might be more or less, it's a continuum and an average. But what it says to us is that even when we're in extremely difficult situations, generally speaking, life circumstances are nowhere near as impactful as our genetics. And as you'll see, as our own intentional activities, and similar to physical activity for the body, the happiness increasing activities are exercise for your brain. And like any physical activity, if you stop doing it, your body will show deterioration. Similar to if you play an instrument or you played an instrument when you were a child. If you stop playing it, those skills begin to deteriorate. Having said that, what we know is our body has memory and if we pick up that sport or that exercise or that musical instrument again, the skills that we had in the past will more readily come back to us. Happiness increasing activities are exercise for your brain. And the more you practice, the stronger that it will get. 
So I'd like to just mention a few myths about happiness. The first is that happiness must be found. And that's completely untrue as we've begun to explore. Happiness can actually be created. The second is happiness lies in changing our life circumstances. Well, what we know is life circumstances only accounts for about 10% of our happiness. So actually winning the lottery or finding that perfect partner or having a baby or buying a new house or getting a new pair of shoes or a great new job do not actually have a significant effect on our happiness. What some of the research shows is that we adapt this idea of hedonic adaptation where if I get a new pair of shoes, I think they're absolutely wonderful, but within a couple of months, they no longer make me as happy as they used to. And in fact, what the research shows is, again, on averages, when people get married, that level of happiness lasts for about two years, and then they go back to where they were. And again, that doesn't mean that we can't increase our happiness. It just means that our life circumstances only contribute about 10%. And another myth is that you're either born with it or not. And we talked a little bit about the genetics, and there is some genetic element to happiness. Various studies have shown that indeed some family members are actually happier than their siblings. By looking at twin studies, they can establish that sometimes some people are happier than others. If you'll notice in the video link below, they do a, a research study on actually a, a set of twins and explore their happiness. But that doesn't mean because you're not born with a level of happiness that you can't have it. Again, if we go back to these intentional activities, these happiness increasing activities that make up 40% of our ability to be happy, there is lots of opportunity for happiness. So why do we want to be happier? Well, increasingly, research has begun to look at what is the positive attributes if someone is happier. And what they found that being happier doesn't make you just feel good. People who are happy are more sociable, they're more energetic, they have better relationships, they have a better immune system, people who are happy are, earn more money, they're better leaders, they're more likely to get and stay married. They're more likely to have strong friendships and social supports. They're more likely to be physically healthier and happy people live longer. So in becoming happier, we boost our experiences of joy, contentment, love, pride, and awe. We improve the aspects of our life that include our energy levels, our immune systems, our engagement with work and with other people, and our physical and our mental health. By becoming happier, we boost our self-confidence, our self-esteem, our self-compassion, our self-worth. By becoming happier, we actually believe and know that we are worthy human beings. And you can only imagine the benefit that this has to us as individuals, to our family, our friends, our coworkers, our communities, and society at large. So as you can see on the screen, these are the 12 happiness increasing activities. These have been researched through a variety of different universities and have been demonstrated to show positive outcomes. Over the next 12 modules, you'll be introduced to each of those topics and you'll gain some insight into what does it mean to develop optimism or cultivate optimism and how do you go about doing that. The modules will present you with brief videos that you can watch, but also tangible activities that you can implement today. So in conclusion, I'd just like to say that much of happiness increasing activities and improving happiness is changing habits and habits are hard to change. This is work and it's exercise for our brain and practice makes us stronger. It's important that we remember to be kind to ourselves because we are hardwired for negativity. Going back thousands of years, genetically, we are hardwired for survival and our brain will sometimes fight our ability to want to be happy. But the science is increasingly showing us that 40% of our happiness is intentional activity, the exercise for our brain. 
So in conclusion, I invite you to watch the videos for a little bit extra information and to begin to explore the 12 modules that will be posted over the next few weeks. These modules will include some emphasis on children and youth. These are activities that we can learn and relearn throughout our life. So as I end today, I'd just like to say thanks for your time and be happy.